from what I know. Um, since 1996, Tobago officially, or as far as written text, is responsible for its own education. But the division in Tobago, or the House Assembly as a whole, has never taken up that mantle. Trinidad still controls the entire education system. So that's in interesting. I can tell you my standard. Who prepared the curriculum? Who prepared the curriculum for today? So I'm telling you something. You'll be hard pressed now. You'll be hard pressed now to find one yes. single to be going in textbook in school. Right. Yeah, I'm saying it was a textbook. So, because I'm going to name the teachers, right? So, standard two was Mr. Clem McPherson, standard three was Mr. Junior Webster. Right, and so what I'm asking is, did these two men take it upon themselves to teach their students Tobago it, 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 it history? Quite, it is quite, it is quite possible. It is quite possible. Or was it because it felt that they need to be honored, right? Because, because um, there has never been any, because some teachers go outside of the curriculum. They do that in order to develop the child, and so on. And it all depends on their persuasion. And I know Mr. McPherson quite well, and he's the kind of Radical who's even Juni. I believe you're talking about Juni from Roxbury. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So oh, I'm just yeah. curious because I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I went to school from one minute. Mm -hmm. One we at a time. To, mm -hmm. We were taken on school trips to these places to see these things. And, you know, I mean, I always talk about how amazing excursions were. I liked excursions because it also meant I would get macaroni pie and drumsticks, right? And that was. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that she used to demand. She used to demand her food. Okay, okay. For those excursions, but, but, right? But, but, um, a history of self should not be an informal subject. No, it should be part of the curriculum. No, I'm saying, now I'm realizing from I'm saying, what you're saying. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. We yeah. learn what we call West Indian history and that kind of thing. Oh. I so learn history from um, a European perspective. And so, so this is why I'm asking you this, Mr. Yeah. Because if that's the case, then we need to honor the teachers who took that upon yeah. themselves. Up until one, December, one, 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 one person at a time. Up until December of 2020, my assumption was every child in Tobago was afforded the same education that I had been afforded. And so I'd really like to know if that wasn't the case, um, one, I'm going to honor these gentlemen if that wasn't the case. But if it was the case, we need to find out where that curriculum directive came from and we need to look it up. It's got to be existing somewhere. There's somewhere it's there. And because in so much as I want to honor them, because I think they were amazing. They were some of the best teachers I had in my life um, and very principled, you know, um, except for Mr. Webster having, he, you know, he said, go get Saga Boy. That's how he kept the kids in line, right? Because that's what he would beat you with. I never got a, a beating from him, but it kept <laughs> him in line with the threats of Saga Boy coming out, which was what he called his um, whip. But um, I think I'd like to know, because if it's <laughs> there was a curriculum, we need to find it, and it can certainly be turned into a textbook nowadays. It's so much easier. Anyway, I, I hate to digress that much, but I just, I was like, oh my gosh, we need to get to the bottom of this mm -hmm. because this was taught. Um, yeah, the outings. Yeah, you're, you're, you're one of the, um, you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> she exactly she really I, is. Is what I'm telling you when I embarked on this trouble, I discovered Sandy and, and Samson. Yeah. Biggie. And I got that from the book, um, The Story of the Bible, written by C.R. Otley. Right? But that's in the 2000s. They're about there, just around 2000 when I was really upbeat and trying to find out what was going on. And so that um, information was coming to me and I ended up got that. I understood though that that book might have been for a brief period in, in Bishop, the story of the Bible written by C.R. Yes, it was. So we had that book when yeah. I was in Bishop. So I would say also, right, Bishop's West Indian history, yeah. we were taught amazing. So I, never, I, I went to Rock Rosette. I never had wow. that. People were just kind Lisa Griffith, Miss Griffith is still there, but she was a very young teacher who came to Tobago um, from Trinidad. She came when I was a student there. She joined Bishop's High School faculty when I was a student. We also had Mrs. Arnold at the time, um, which is 
one of twins. So Mrs. Arnold taught history and Spanish and her twin sister taught, I think at Scarborough But they actually did an amazing job teaching West Indian history all the way back from the native people um, on. I just chose, I, well, I chose not to do history for um, O levels because I think it clashed with chemistry. You had to pick one or Spanish, you know, anyway. So I think though, yes, I give Bishop's credit for that. And that book was there, C.R. Utley's book. Um, but that, again, I'm telling you the whole thing about Sudley Park and stuff wasn't taught at Bishop's. That Tobago history was definitely standard two, standard three. Um, and so it's very interesting. Okay. You, 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 you want to you want be lucky ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to be lucky ones. She used, she, she used to go on some magnificent school trips, Plymouth. Um, she went, look at that, look, look, look at that school trip that Dr. Duke went on. She visited the swamp. Yeah. Where they so built the, the lagoon. Helena is now built. We actually went there for our science outing as Bishop students. Um, as Bishop student, we went to the Cannings factory in Trinidad. We went to the Emperor Valley Zoo. We went, um, as a as elementary school student, we went to Trinidad where we won the Red Cross competition in Trinidad. I actually stayed with this lovely Indian family who housed us, me, Mrs. Beach, Bernie Daniel, and I think it was Ansom, Ansom Robinson. Those were the three of us who went to Trinidad as an elementary student to compete in the Red Cross competition where you had to show how you could tie knots and all that stuff on command at the Jean Pierre complex, right? Wow. And I remember. Right? Um, from the Ford. We, Tobago used to have a reading competition. I don't know if it still happens. It used to happen there at Fairfield complex, right? And the first part would be the country students will compete at Roxborough Sec where you'd pick, a, you'd pick something from a book you like and you have to come and read it and people would judge how well you read and then they selected winners from that preliminary or whatever round you call that and then we all showed up in Scarborough Fairfield complex and again competing against kids from across Tobago in terms of reading right I don't know if that kind of stuff happens anymore we have um, a debate team too debates we have that too so i don't know how much of that is still in existence but i would tell you know that all the choral groups right so all sorts of things that really help to foster public speaking you know it's like when people meet me now and they're like how come you learn to speak so well but you're taught that from a fairly young age back then it was part of curriculum again this was the vision of education you'd be getting into education buses to go to these events so i'd very much like to know who was in charge of the curriculum then um yeah i have another saying she also used to be a reading competitor in the competition um and so i i don't know if that's still the case but there was a very interestingly unique and powerful curriculum in tobago between i can speak for myself at least between the years 1987 and 1995. So I know you're saying 1996 is when things changed, which is interesting because that's about when my educational journey in Tobago ended. And I can tell you that everything I'm describing is pre-1996. Okay, I'm done speaking. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, it only changed in terms of, of law, in hmm. terms of practice. Policies. Because, yeah, because what I'm saying to you is that the education division in Tobago has never taken control of education in Tobago. It has never done. Right? So, that, um, so, 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 do you know if we have Tobagonians on the board that 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 that, that go about making? The curriculum see, for Tobago, you see what for schools. The as a matter of fact, it is my, my wife is a teacher also, so that I have a fair idea what is going on in the primary schools, and most is really all all the literature is coming from Trinidad. Oh and boy, you have, you have a lot of Padmadis and a lot of the East Indian things because the authors are East Indian, and they are causing the Tobagonians to learn about East Indian culture and all kinds of different things from Trinidad. 
and not really having to be with so that so of what is necessary to help to be able to be liberated because see, if you don't know yourself you can't really be liberated but my, I, know it, but I, know it's long I just remembered one more thing right another opportunity for yeah. kids to learn a lot in the countryside was actually your sister and mr brooks over brenda brenda and the, the, every wednesday they held story time right yeah. every wednesday was story time from the library at the library it started at like 3 30 i guess you know and any kid could come and you'd bring any book you like and you got to read so you could take any book from the library and come into that little sort of auditorium space and yeah. do story time right and it was by children i mean you know those of us from like four to eleven and you know what was nice about it was also you you were little but you felt some responsibility right because if you saw miss james driving and she see you and you miss it she would stop and say cindy you didn't come today what happened we missed you in story time man you should have come and you know i don't know i mean everybody knows to this day even my staff laughs because i love librarians like everywhere i go i make sure i connect with librarians even in med school everywhere i've gone i make sure i go introduce myself to librarians and that's credited really to your sister and mr brooks there in roxborough because they made that roxborough library feel like home and mm. i don't know if that still happens now but it was really incredible the power now that wasn't where we learned history but you learned again the value of reading and the value of imagination mm. and the power your imagination has to kid. So anyway, all right. <laughs> so I said, what you're having there is um, uh, individuals doing their thing and making doing their thing, thing. And, and making their contribution. That's not the yeah. government. No, this is what I'm talking about. You need, you need central leadership to guide the society. The society has to have a philosophy. It has to have a goal, a societal goal, an objective. What we are trying trying to achieve. You yes. To be, to achieve, you have to know your history and where we are on the journey. You follow what I'm saying? So Brenda would have been to that. She would have brought to a lot of books. I learned, I learned to read a lot from um, Brenda bringing home books. And, from your sister. Tell them that your sister. She yeah, was from, the librarian at the time there in Roxborough. Yes, yeah, so I learned about a lot of books like Alistair McLean and Sidney Sheldon and them. So that we, we, like for instance, in the boys' room, you know the home is a long time, you have the boys' room. So myself, Max, and Trevor will be going competition for who could read the latest into the night. So we'll get wow. asleep and that kind of thing. But that was Brenda and, and then all family had that kind of culture. Right? But I'm saying but that's individually and it might be limited not just individual but to individual families. But to be has been an individual society. To be hey. really emerge as a nation with national objectives and goals and so on. And that is what we need to be. To be has actually been left for dead really. And everybody pursuing the whole Everything thing. seemed like it, 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 it's dead. And so on. Right? So, and that's why our liberation is taking this long in terms of the enlightenment and the understanding because we don't know our, our history. And not just us knowing history, it's how to interpret it. A lot of people read that book by C.R. Utley. And but they don't know. They will, but the interpretation is another end. Look, for instance, the closing down of the government in Tobago, the colonial, the British colonial government in Tobago. You hear some people, they are blaming Tobago for that. You know? Tobago is not at fault for that. You know? The African people who slave here are not at fault for that. You know? hmm. And the British government are not at fault for that either. So I'm saying people read, which how do you interpret? The, the economy down here is based or is based, still, is still based, or was based on colonization. So the decisions they made are colonial decisions. What happened is that they were able to access sugar. The Tobago, the, the mainstay of the Tobago economy was sugar. The British no. colonial economy in Tobago, they were able to access the sugar cheaper on the European market. They call it the sugar revolution. Where tobacco, where did tobacco stand before or after? So that's all colonial doings. Is this sugar beets? Right? 
Dr. Duke has something to say. Yeah, Europeans realized they could extract and extract sugar from a certain type of beet, that changed yeah, was, the was, game. Yeah, it was beet root sugar. Actually, yeah. you figure sugar came. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, sugar yeah. was what they were dependent. Now, remember, but before yeah. the colonization, they sweetened their things with honey, right? It wasn't until colonization and sugar. And then, be, and I, I, this is what's blowing my mind because this stuff was taught. You know, I just came on to ask the audience. Yeah, you're lucky. You, no, you yeah. are, you're, 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 you're I'm coming to the audience. They remember this one, right? Because yeah, she used to read a lot. Yeah. yeah. But when they were teaching us, like they, when they taught you Louis Do and how to spell Louis Do, and they actually taught us the French heritage of the name and what it meant. When they taught us the meaning of Orkinskyo and how to spell Orkinskyo, right? Uh, this is a little girl from Argyle going to Delaford Anglican School, learning how to spell Orkinskyo and spelling tests, right? Because when you see Mr. Webster or Mr. McPherson and you know any of your teachers, then it's time for spelling. They'll just sometimes just pop quiz, right? But you know, but you'd remember because of the amazing stories they told us, at least as a student, that was my recollection of how I associated names and words was also the story they told. You know, even the meaning of Poland and who the Polanders were. So I'm just sitting here dumbfounded, realizing that maybe a lot of these teachers were doing this on their own. Yeah, 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 many, there are many gaps. There are many, many, many gaps. If you go through and you do a survey on the Tobago population, you will be amazed to see. It's when people do programs like what I'm doing here, right? And because I was called to do this, so that I had um, the onus of was on me to go and to, to research and to dig, to find, yes. and put things Thank in you. perspective. As I said, perspective is a hell of a thing in Tobago here. Not, wow. just, not just in Tobago here, because we were not properly taught critical thinking. I find we are quite lacking in that, right? So it's not just a Tobago thing, it's in Trinidad and among the African population in the Caribbean. So some families and some people escape. So when they read a piece of material, they can properly interpret what they read. But fundamental, and even for people who enter on to higher education and so on, the interpretation and understanding of things is, is, is really quite lacking. Uh, it's only when I, I grew old I understood what I don't, I'm not saying this to disparage anybody, but Morgan Job and his program used to be saying, he said the whole country literate. He said the whole country, the doctors, the lawyers, the teachers, he said the whole country illiterate. It's only as I grow older, I understood what he meant because he was dealing with that, the ability to interpret and understand. Yes, interpret what's going on around us, yes. To, the ability to infer and so on, and to deduce. It, it is... It well... Is, Lucky. Well, Brother James, we can go on and on okay. with the education system. Yeah, but we have, an, yeah, we have another question here for you. Yes. We have so much here for you. Right, so, Anthony, mm -hmm. given, the, given the train of thought, of thought, where do you see Tobago headed in terms of where autonomy and self-governance for the island and its people are concerned? Because then a lot of us believe that we already have self-government and self-governance. Answer this question as thorough as you can. We almost in an hour. Yes, well, I will attempt to. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> now, the history of the word autonomy in its free and natural sense means, you know, to, to be self powered That's the word, meaning of the word autonomy. Self-power. Yeah, self-power, you know, so that's the meaning of autonomy. But in Tobago, in the context of the Tobago struggle, the Tobago pursuit, the meaning of the word autonomy has changed. It is given a particular context in Tobago, and I have to, to explain it, right? Robinson is the person who introduced the word, and then other people spin it in different ways. Same question of interpretation again. So that um, in the Robinson's motion, the Robinson motion, he said he was asking for a measure of autonomy, autonomy, because he understood autonomy to mean independent, self-constituted. But he asked for a measure of autonomy. 
And and over the years, on going from that, people now have because the autonomy that was granted granted yes was not was what Robinson asked for because Robinson was not precise either. Robinson did not state in the motion for to be exactly what structure he wanted and to what degree. So the PNM basically gave a kind of county council. The first House Assembly in that to the 7th of 1980 it was really a glorified county council. It had nothing. The assemblymen were poorly paid. There was no structure. There was no nothing. In fact, he had accepted an island council, which was for three years. Hmm. Right. So whatever was, was, was given, as the case may be, to be going and speak up from there and say that they're looking for autonomy. But when you listen to that, when you listen to the, 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 um, the overtures and so on, they are really speaking about something under, under Trinidad. And when you listen to people like Hodgson Charles and London, and, and you are surprised because you will think that these guys are so enlightened. The, the, the fact that it matters, the, 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 um, the evidence is not suggesting nothing. Even with so what, the, so, you know, so what? So what you are saying? Uh, because nation right now we don't, they are they are still looking for internal self-government which um so they are kind of stuck in that 1970 something idea because they misunderstood what was in the first place because self-government all over the world begins with internal self-government there are only two countries that did not go through internal self-government they go straight to self-government or independence Self-government is the broader term. Dr. Duke is Dr. Duke is Dr. Duke is here for you again. Yes, hold on. No, uh, uh, I like him on because I agree with him, but I think um I think what was lost with Tobago's path is I really view what Mr. Robinson did as the art of negotiation, right? Right. He knew what he wanted, and so you have to make some concessions in the beginning to actually move the needle forward. Right. And so, I don't know if somebody's actually written a, a, a full biography of the path to the Tobago House of Assembly. I'd love to hear it and see it because I actually see what he did as being analogous with how America marched toward its republic, republic, and then how they framed the American Constitution and called it a living document with the expectation that as people evolved and as the country evolved, the document would change to mean what the people need. I think what I'm hearing you say, Mr. James, is yes. unfortunately because so many people were opposed to his vision rather than understand his vision, they haven't actually been able to carry it forward and evolve it to where you would like to see it go. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, I know, well, I know um, things take time and they happen uh, at, a, at a point in time and so on. It's a long time, you know. But yeah, in so, addition, so people like, actually so wrote that. back what he did, unfortunately, right? Because, again, yeah. if you look at it in a historical scope, right? House of Assembly forms in 1980. Within six years, he's now moved himself to become the prime minister of the country and starts giving Tobago more things toward autonomy, right? Because you can't really be autonomous if you don't have your own ports of entry that can have direct transport from outside right the country right so he put it yes. in place you know i mean honestly if you look at the the evolution the pace of development from 1980 to 1990 from the fight to get the assembly by the year 80 to establishing a an airport extension to a, a port and a harbor that can actually house ships from i mean clearly you could tell the guy was hoping the next generations that followed him meaning the hotroys and the orville londons and the ansel dennis's and the the the, Tracy. the tracy's would actually move it forward but what we've seen is actually either stagnation or a slow marching backward, because I don't think people, first of all, I'm not even sure they've been taught how he did it, right? And to really put him on in rank with other amazing statesmen around the world in terms of that process. Anyway, I just wanted to come in not to disagree. I actually agree with what you're saying and I love it, but I wanted to come in to sort of pull the timeline in, because I don't think people realize how much happened in the island of Tobago between establishing a House of Assembly in 1980 and by 1990, the person who 
fought for the assembly rising to the ranks of prime minister and by the year 1995 moving on within a couple of months to becoming president that's a pretty phenomenal march and very akin to what we've watched with say um Barack Obama in the United States, from going from being a state senator in Illinois to appearing at the DNC, giving a speech that says there's no red states, no blue states, we're the United States of America, and four years later, he's your president, right? And so it's, it's very interesting that when we look back in the picture, the timeline is amazing. Yeah, so the point I'm making, um, Internal self government is a step to self government, right? And in Haiti and America, it didn't happen that way because Haiti would have fought for their independence and defeated to Saint Oliveira of of of, of um, the French. Yeah, right. but then but then they 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 end up in a great debt. You no, know, but I was just explaining. Um, the process um, of internal self-government to self-government. So I'm saying that there are two countries that we know that didn't yes. internal self-government. Yes, Haiti but, and America. Meant internal self-government is not an end game. Self-government is your end game. So that, where are we? Where, 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 right? where are so we with this? Arrived at self-government. And I'm saying in the case of America, they fought off their English forefathers. Yes. And their independence. But all the rest of territories down here, they went to inter, they went to internal self government. Trinidad and Tobago as a as a colony had internal self government. That when Williams was chief minister at independence, they became he became prime minister, and so it is with the other um, Caribbean nations. So, but in Tobago here, Tobago no, Tobago now our motion was more for internal self government. So Robinson, knowing the history, did so, but it was not meant to stay there. So you have people in Tobago now fighting for what they call full internal self-government and full autonomy. And the meaning of that is unclear. But one thing that we know is that they mean it is something under Trinidad. Tobago and Trinidad were not meant to be in the same constitution because we are two different peoples. But we are Trinidad and Tobago. Explain that and tell us where we are. So that Trinidad and Tobago is the name of a colony. Because as I was saying before concerning federalism, when, when people come together, in order to come together, you have to be independent in the first place. So when you come together in the modern civilized world, it is based on partnership. The official word or the formal word for partnership is federalism. So it is based on, on, on that. So what they have to do to be able to call it now, the PLM coined the term unitary state, is really the colony and the way it was designed by the British. Trinidad continued with the same operation and in, in, in 1962. See, the, see this one. See, see, see where we are right now. What I want to say is that um, APT James who was the champion of Tobago at that time. Yeah, we were going to come to APT, yes. alive in 1962, all of us. So he, he died in 62 January, so that there was nobody to fight for Tobago, so that the PNM were able to get away with subsuming Tobago ah. in their own constitution. And the, same, the system continues today. And God has now given us this chance now to move from internal because you are not meant to be internal. Internal. But you ask the question, well, what about external? So these guys who are operating here, you, it, to me, the ignorance is really, I don't say it to despise, but the ignorance is absolutely shocking because the, the history of the Caribbean is right here. People are moving from internal self-government to, to, to self-government. I was explaining that self-government is the broader term. Britain is a self-governing nation, but it doesn't celebrate independence. So therefore, independence is a colonial term. So that if you are former, you are formally colonized, you are formally dependent. Now, in, in English, they don't say undependent. You have now become undependent. The so what about Jamaica? 
the people. So what about so what about Jamaica and Barbados? To become in, independent. So I don't want a point to, to, to be lost. In in um the goal after you're dependent is to become not dependent. They call that independent. What's that happening? Yes. Propaganda here has made independence a bad, bad, bad word. But they're independent. Here. But wow. But for Tobago, it has become a very bad word. So the good word for Tobago is to be lost, colonized, and to be stupefied in a Trinidad constitution. Where and still, de and still dependent. Where we are grouping. No, we're not independent. Tobago no, dependent. And still dependent. And groping in the darkness and begging Trinidad for what is yours every year. It, just, it is blindingly stupid as far as I'm concerned. Right? So that to answer the former question, where do we go from here, right? We we are moving towards self-government. What is going on now, and it's not me doing it, it is God carrying us. And we have to be grateful for that because Tobago does not have the unity, Tobago does not have the strength to, to take on Trinidad. We don't have it, let's face it. It is God and glory to God who is doing this. The 6-6 six, six is, the, is the work of God come after just after 40 years. And God is going to take to be good. well. Well, we say in glory to God. Yeah. But God ain't gonna step out from the clouds and come here. No, well, well, what I mean? What we I mean? Deal it. No, 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 no. I know what you mean. I'm just saying. But you. We have some people here now. Mm -hmm. Where you think the government? Now that we are going to have, we have the six. six where you think we're going wrong? What should we be asking for? What should we be doing? Well, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent, excellent question. So we have to know um, what where, God wants. Yeah, well, well, yeah, what God wants, and where, where should we be going from here? Should we constitute ourselves back into a Trinidad constitution and under Trinidad? Is Tobago's destiny under Trinidad really? Hmm. Really and truly, really Tobagonian? Tobago's destiny is under Trinidad, where Trinidad controls the economy, controls the distance that we can go to continue with the, the discrimination? Is it really right to give a man power over you? You don't know if he's stupid, if he's bright, if he don't, if he fear, if he just, but if a man has power over you, so that when Trinidadians have sex in Trinidad, they are bringing forward a superior people, so that the future sex and reproductive reproduction that is taking place in Tobago is to bring forth a people for those who have sex in Trinidad to rule, to rule and bring forth their children to rule, really, so clearly, the idea is to be equitable. The idea, first of all, is to be independent. And so and you relate to Trinidad from that. And the day Tobago becomes independent, Tobago becomes strong, as I've said before. The, Tobago is the richest country in the English-speaking Caribbean, the richest, richer than Trinidad. And Tobago is also a bigger country, bigger island than Trinidad. That's an undisputed fact. Tobago has more territory, land, sea, and air than Trinidad. Trinidad has no sea. And we, have, the, we right? have this question here for you. Right. I, know you're, I know you're answering part of it. In right. your opinion, would the gross, would the gross domestic product, GDP, okay, of a of a unified Trinidad and Tobago be greater if Tobago had real and true? Autonomy. Right. So let me answer that and I'll go back to the other question because this question in itself is a is a contradiction. It's a self-contradiction. Right? You say okay. that the, 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 the United GDP of Trinidad and Tobago would be greater if Tobago had real and true autonomy. And this is what I'm saying again. So you see what I was explaining, the real and true autonomy. So whatever that is. So Tobago, because, right? So yeah. Tobago right now have more. Equity than Trinidad? No, 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 no. Here it is. The person is asking if Tobago had real and true autonomy, but he still maintained a Trinidad and Tobago. So therefore, he has given a meaning to real and true autonomy. So real and true autonomy is Tobago having more responsibility, but still under Trinidad in a Trinidad and Tobago. And that's what I was talking uh, about. And this is yes. where let's clarify. This Let's clarify, because yeah. the question is actually from Mama Coco, and it's actually pretty clear. So the question is based on the premise that currently 
what you're talking about is that Tobago does not have autonomy, i.e. it doesn't have self-governance, it doesn't have decision-making power, it doesn't have a budget of its own that it actually, as a treasury, generates, right? It yeah, doesn't generate it does. own income, right? And so, wait, wait a second, let me finish with the James. So going back to your example of, say, the United States, right? So like New York State has its income, it has its own income tax, it has its own state Senate, state Congress, it has its governor. It dictates what New York does such that even if the federal government didn't give some money, New York functions to a certain degree on New York's treasury. New York even has its own treasury, right? It has yes. its own treasury. So the question here is if Tobago had such a setup, where Tobago was allowed to have its own taxes that it levied at the ports of entry, had its own taxes for income tax for the people of Tobago to pay, so that Tobago collected and had its own treasury and contributed. If Tobago's oil, for example, that money for any oil that comes from those borders you're talking about was paid. And trade. And trade. We have our own harbor. Right. So we could do trade with other islands, Caribbean That's like islands. How certain municipalities in Trinidad have their own sort of governance as well. How would that work, right? And how, because otherwise, what you're saying is actually your model only works if Tobago has seceded. Uh, let me let me explain. Let me see what I'm what I uh, my vision for Tobago and Tobago and Trinidad is akin to what um, exists in the OECS countries in the Caribbean. Area. Those are um, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. Uh, Monastery is an observer there. What happens there is that each of those countries is independent. But the things that they they have their own prime minister and their, their own um, governor general, head of state. But they have freedom of movement in and amongst them. The things that they do together, they form committees to deal with that. So they have a partnership in the Caribbean. We don't often speak of them. And they have a better relationship between Tobago and Trinidad, more respectful, more respectable. And everything, but they are all they are all running their own affairs. They are playing their sports separately. This is why we have in the Caribbean the other people from the Caribbean, the other cricketers and footballers and all of them. All of them are seeing their way, but Tobagonians can't see their way because we are in this conglomerate. So mm. we call Trinidad and Tobago, where Trin Tobago Trinidad is 1.4 million people. Tobago is 60, 70 will always continue to lose its population to Trinidad. And we can develop the older characters, the younger in Tobago. From the time you reach 18, 19, you we, have to go away. We all go on to Trinidad. You follow, you follow, you follow what I'm saying? So that is what is that is what obtains here. It can work in, in, in any form or fashion. It has not worked, it can work. What um what your Charles and Robert London came together to do, as I said, they moved away from what the discussion, all the the the, the um the excitement and activity that, take, that was taking place constitutionally in Tobago was done by me or my organization. And then we started the High Five program on Channel 5. And from there, we were generating a lot of excitement. See what, what Shirley is, said to you here. Yeah. See so what, what Shirley is saying here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, see what Shirley, see what Shirley cooks, trying to help you out there with. The will be greater in a, in a, in a greater self-determined Tobago, right? So I'll come. I'll come. I'll, I'll come to that. Is so that, that true? No, no. Is this true? Well, that might. That will be. That will be true, given the construct that she's saying there. That should be true. But I remember in all of that, you know, because Tobago, I guess, may be able to do a bit more. But you, you know what we're trying to do on this show? Mm -hmm. We're trying for the young people who never hear this conversation before. And because of the intrigue that this topic is bringing, I want to congratulate you mm -hmm. for having been here three times to explain exactly what we are lacking of. 
this quality of knowledge, this quality of intelligence. And I want you to tap yourself on the back because we are going to get to the point where you are explaining right now. And that is of a unified Trinidad and Tobago. You know, what, what would you do? Are we speaking of a unified Trinidad and Tobago? Because if we're using the term autonomy, autonomy and independence in the context of nations, as Mr. James described, is different. Yes. But when we talk about autonomy that's in the conversation right now, it's still under a country called yes, Trinidad and So are you saying no to that? I'm saying no to that. Okay, so you're no to speaking that. secession. No, no to so are you speaking that. secession or? Well, I don't use the word secession because Tobago was not ceded to Trinidad. All I'm saying, we have, we have separation. The government and people of Tobago constitution must be separate constitute, constitutionally, administratively from that of Trinidad. It can't work because what is happening, you are leaving back. You are leaving back responsibilities of Tobago to Trinidad or with Trinidad. And it's not here, it's not a case where responsibilities of Trinidad will be under Tobago control. All that we are talking about here is that we have dropped ourselves, diminished ourselves, and saying that some aspects of our responsibilities in Tobago will be controlled by the people and the voters of Trinidad. And I'm saying that has to be absolutely wrong. You have a United States of America where each state is separate. What is going on here is that people are looking and I'm saying it is in, is it, it is in ignorance because we have not distilled the ideas properly. So they are still locked up there in what they know. So not using, remember, we don't want contradictions here. Mm. Not using the word secession, mm. that doesn't mean that we're not going to be having secession because you... You see, this is the only thing about um, this, is, this is forming... I am I'm talking about forming a union between Tobago and Trinidad. I'm speaking of a confederal union of Tobago and Trinidad. And I've given the name of it, the United Islands in the West Indies. We are having a relationship with Trinidad. We're just making it just and equitable and proper and civilized. That's what I'm saying. So if you listen to me carefully, I'm saying we will have a relationship like what exists in the European Union or in the OCS countries which in that case, Tobago can breed and fulfill its potential. Tobago will never achieve its potential, its destiny under Trinidad. It will so never- what, so, where are we, so where are we going from here? We want to go on 18 minutes. Tell so, us where we go. No, right. so tell us where we go is, from let here. Say, let me say, let me say. Mm -hmm. I, say I, I can. The future of Tobago and Trinidad is Tobago separate in terms of government. The things that we agree to do together, we will set up mutual committees to deal with that. The freedom of movement will continue. Freedom of trade will continue. Because of how the electricity system is, is generated, we can put a committee to deal with that. Right? The Caribbean airline, it belongs to Trinidad as much as it belongs to Tobago. We can have a committee for that. Right now, all these things are controlled from Trinidad, and Trinidad is headquarters and Tobago is a branch. What these people, without recognizing it, are calling autonomy, is Tobago continue to be a branch. You, you, can, remove, you can remove the word, word if you like, but Tobago is continuing. So to I'm, smiling, I'm smiling right now. Do you think? They will continue to suffer. So it do you only, think only when they get into it we are realize what, what have we done? So do you think we should have yes. sitting of parliament at least once per month in Tobago? The sitting of the House of Assembly will be done, you know? No, not the House of Assembly. The Parliament in Trinidad. The Parliament in Trinidad. It's still Trinidad. Is the whole of Trinidad will be coming over into Tobago? It doesn't make sense. We want this this is a colonial, a colonial um fusing. That has taken place in Trinidad. Well, I'm listening to you say that we will still be unified. No, no. I mean, what I'm hearing, Mr. James, let's, let's just say it as it is, right? What you're saying is Tobago needs to become its own sovereign. Sovereign nation, definitely. No, a sovereign nation is 
let's not let's not skirt around it. You know, those relationships are this recession. Yeah. Your bottom line is you're saying Tobago needs to become its own self sovereign nation. We just need I'm, to say if that's I'm, the, I'm very clear about that. I'm every other relationship just to well, we, we, we need to hear it from you <laughs> because sorry. because if you if you are telling us that mm -hmm. the way Farley and Watson do is mm. approaching mm. internal self governance is not the way you are well, speaking. Well, 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 when, when, when Watson was with me in the liberation movement, that's what we discussed. What I'm saying is not new. It. At one point in time, we were thinking of the, the arrangement like what exists in the United States. That wouldn't work because between the two, how are you going to elect the center? And then you have to be able to achieve the objective. The objective. The Tobagoian sportsmen over the years are suffering. We need our own cricket team, our own football team, athletics, or we need our own sporting teams. If we are there with Trinidad, Trinidad will continue to dominate Tobago. Tobago will not be able to exhale. So you have to look at the objective and how do you achieve the objective. So how do we you don't, you don't need to be the same constitution with Trinidad? Another question here for you know, if you could if you could design Tobago. Let's tell the audience, right? Given your view yeah. and your dream. For a more, mm -hmm. not a more, but for a sovereign to be. Mm -hmm. That's how we should be. We're finally at that point. Let's tell the audience, because, right, we can talk around it for a actionable step. So Somebody's playing something. Mr. Um, oh, oh, campaigning? So this is the question here for you. If you could design Tobago's future relationship with Trinidad. I will do our Can you be specific? Wait, let me ask the question so the audience will know. Mm. Can you be specific in your description? Of course. <laughs> That's what I'm attempting to do. So here what is about that. Let's suppose tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, Tobago will be a republic. Trinidad will Trinidad already is a republic. Trinidad will be a republic. This but we are Trinidad and Tobago. No, so you are separating us. You ask me to to um design. I'm designing for you. Oh, 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 oh you, you are, are designing. Design. I'm going to design. Okay. Tobago will be. Kid, you're only listening to you, no? Tobago and Kid, you only have to give us our Tobago internal governance. A republic with a president, with a president of Tobago. Oh, you really? For, yes, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will vote for a president directly. That president will pick his own cabinet. You will vote for a legislator directly. Those people will go into the House of Assembly to make laws. The president will join them in the assembly as the 13th member. Well, it wouldn't be Trinidad Union. and Tobago, would it? No, Are you saying the Republic of Tobago, like the passport, the name, literally the say the Republic of Tobago? That's what he's saying. So yeah. here's my question, Mr. James. Yes. How does that happen? Because I think we, we jumped a step, right? Yeah. How does Tobago become that nation? Not Because let's not say it's magical and we wake up tomorrow, because there wouldn't be magic. How does mm -hmm. that happen? How well, does that realistically happen? Well, all right. So we are where we are right now with the 6-6 six, six and the House Assembly cannot be under that 40 of 1996. It cannot be re reconstituted. Okay, so we have a decision to make. Trinidad is not going to walk under Tobago. That's 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 for sure. So if we don't separate, you could have a system like what ex exists in the state. Tobago will not be able to achieve its potential with that. Its dream with that. I'm saying. Cindy, you did a, you did American history, Cindy. I think you did American <laughs> world yeah. history. I did yeah. both, Coco. That so, was liberal arts. So, 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 so that um, is either, is either, and that, that won't happen, and that, that is not what God wants. Tobago is not going to go back under Trinidad. And in the same mm -hmm. constitution, we will be dominated by Trinidad and will be a lost, non distinct people. Trinidad is making laws for us. They come up here as they are doing right now. They are taking away our lands and so on from us, dispossessing us and so on, making all the laws. We can't make no laws for ourselves in Tobago. We cannot make our own land legal. We can't do anything. On the highways and the byways, Trinidad is still making the law for us. Our speed limit yeah. is the same. Trinidad will want to join the same constitution with Trinidad. Trinidad will dominate Tobago. Tobago will be lost, totally lost. 
I love so, I, so that Baba is saying that my vision is that I want to speak to my vision. And she, yes. And Cindy was asked, you know, do we get there? I'm saying this is where we are. Right now, we know where we are. And how do we go there now? Right? The system is locked down. We have to come up with something new. It is a right. So who system. comes up with that? Because it's not in the hands of the voter, right? So Begonians can't vote on referenda um, without Trinidad and the president actually putting that forth. So who does that? Because currently uh, Tobago's parliamentarians, are, you know, right? They're right. Peanuts. So who does that? I mean, this is all well and good what we're saying, but who does it? And until that can be done, mm -hmm. what's the way forward to well, the impasse? What's the way <laughs> forward? Because yeah. you, you just eloquently described it. The hands of the Tobigonian is tied, right? Short of a revolution, the hand of the Tobigonian is tied. And even a revolution will be put down because Tobago has no military, etc. And this isn't a conversation about a revolution. I know there are people who are getting ready to snapshot this video to use it as proof that this is there's some danger in what's being spoken of. So how do we backtrack it into the conversation of the reality today? Well, well, um, what do they do? 